Welcome everyone to week four of the AAF simulated on EA Sports. We got the second game of the week and it should be a good one. We got the two and one San Diego Fleet hitting the road to take on the 0-3 Memphis Express who are looking for their first win of the season. Both these teams been through adversity, but Memphis much more so. They're 0-3. They have had three really close losses. We welcome to you to rainy Memphis right now. The rain is coming down in full force right now as both these teams are getting ready to take the field. Express versus the Fleet. And this is a big game for both these teams, but especially Memphis. When you look at the way this season has gone, 26-19 loss in Week 1. Then in Week 2, they lost 23-20. In Week 3, they lost 18-17. They had a chance at a game-winning field goal, just couldn't get it off in time. They're 0-3, but they have a lot of talent and easily could be 3-0. So... Meanwhile, you got San Diego is 2-1. They've had a great season so far. Both their wins coming against San Antonio. In both of those games, they dominated. So we'll see how they perform today. Both these teams. We got quarterbacks that have been underperforming and overperforming. We got Mike Bergavici overperforming for San Diego. Johnny Manziel underperforming for Memphis. So it'll be really interesting to see how these coaches adjust for this. Mike Singletary, the head coach of Memphis Express. His team is 0-3. They have got to find a way to win today. He dropped to 0-4 in a 10-game season. I mean... It's not over, but it's certainly looking like it. So, a, a win here would be huge for the Express, and we'll see if they can pick it up. And that Memphis will be receiving the football. So, Donnie Hageman sends it away for San Diego. And on to return is Terrence McGee from about the 10. We got raining conditions. It's going to be tough to kick the football. And McGee taking down the 32. So, that's where we'll get our first look at Johnny Manziel and this Memphis Express offense. And Manziel, his season's been up and down. Um... Through the first three weeks, he's thrown for 641 yards, uh, four touchdowns, and one interception. However, he's also fumbled the ball three times. It's been a really big issue, ball security. That's something that, in these rainy conditions, is going to be tough. But Johnny Manziel has got to learn how to hold on to the football. They've had a couple really horrible turnovers the last couple of games that have lost in the game. And it's been because of Johnny Manziel. So we'll see what he can do today. First and 10 from the own 32. Let's see what the play call is from Singletary to start things off. And off play action, Manziel will throw the football. All day to throw. He's got to let it go. He will. Rip to the sidelines. It's complete. And a big running lane for Brandon Barnes, the tight end. All the way down to San Diego's 44. And that is a great pickup on the game's first play. Barnes takes it 24 yards. And this is the type of stuff that Memphis has to do. They have to come out and execute early. That's one of the big X factors of this game. Can Memphis's offense get things going immediately? They've struggled the last couple weeks. You know, they didn't do half bad against Orlando last week. They just struggled in the middle of the game. And it's this inconsistent offense that has caused them to lose the last few games. So we'll see if they can turn things around. Against a San Diego defense that is incredibly good. They turned the ball over six times against San Diego, against uh, on San Antonio last week. They created six turnovers. That's going to be a big factor today. Mansell back to throw on first and ten. Let's go to the sidelines. It is knocked away. Excellent defense by the cornerback, Ron Brooks. And now we're going to get a quick look. At this Memphis offense, the offensive line, they've struggled through the first three weeks. They've got to give Manziel more time and also give some bigger holes for Zach Stacy, who, someone I want to mention next, Zach Stacy, on the season, only 105 yards and one touchdown through three games. But the thing is, he has not seen a lot of production, only 25 carries in three games. Mike Singletary, he's got to start running the football more because that'll free things up for Manziel, take the pressure off of him. And Zach Stacy, he's a great back. We'll see if we can get it done. Second and 10 now from San Diego's 44. Let's see if... The Express can keep things rolling. On the ground, they go to Stacy, and there's a big hole. Nice game in the play, down to the 39. That'll bring him about third and five. Let's take a look at San Diego's defense that had a monster game last week. I mean, they were insane. Miles Nash, Andrew Stelt had a couple nice sacks in there. You got Frank Ginda and AJ Tarpley making plays. And the secondary was absolutely nuts. Demetrius Wright made some great plays. Cameron Kelly got a pick. Ryan Muller had two interceptions. Ron Brooks had a pick six on a batted ball. I mean... San Diego was all over the place, and they were sporting the away jerseys. They're looking pretty fly right now. Big third and five coming up for the fleet. Excuse me, for the express. See what the play call is from Singletary. Rainy conditions for Manziel. Blitz from San Diego. It's picked up. He's going to go deep down the field, and it is called in. Big completion for Brandon Barnes. All the way down to the Tenzo. A couple huge receptions now for the big tight end. And Memphis looking good on this opening drive. 
And this is just a perfect throw for Manziel. This is something they struggle with, guys. I mean, we have seen him week one, week two, and week three just make some bad throws, miss the big plays, but there, he delivered a strike to Brandon Barnes on the money. And this offense looking pretty dang good. First and 10 from the 10, so I guess it's not first and goal, but technically it is. See what they decide to call here. They gotta get this playoff quickly as time is running down on the play clock. They do. On the ground, Zach Stacy trying to bounce and he does not. Demontre Moore is all over that one. Pushes them all the way back to the 13. That's a loss of two or three on the play. Moore, he has been a standout defensive end this season. He's been playing a great game, a, a, a great season, excuse me. And a great play right there. Stacy taken down immediately. And it really is just a bad job by that offensive lineman right there. The right guard, he's got to hold up on his block longer. And gives Zach Stacy a chance. Also, Stacy really should have cut to the inside there. The offensive lineman is giving him inside advantage. Second and 12 now from the 13. Back to throw. Uh, no, it's a ground. It's on the ground. It's Zach Stacy breaking through tacklers and takes... Defenders with him to the five. It's gonna bring up third and five from the five. So unless Memphis somehow gets this ball like within like an inch of the goal line, it's gonna be fourth down, or they have to get at least over the goal line. So we'll see. But third and five, let's see what the play call is. This is a big spot for Memphis. They've struggled scoring touchdowns throughout the season. Can they put a get a big score here in this opening drive of the game? Back to throw is Manzel Blitz. Let's it rip. And he's almost picked off. This should have been intercepted by Ron Brooks. That was a very dangerous pass for Manziel. Lucky that one fell incomplete. And not a good idea there from Johnny. I don't know what he's... I mean, he's looking for Reese Horn coming across that middle. But he throws it as... Excuse me, that's John Lodoelli. The middle linebacker, him and... One of the other cornerbacks there just kind of get mixed up. But it's a big stop for Mike Martz's... Fleet and Austin McGinnis now on for the 22-yard field goal attempt to get the first points of the game. Should be an easy one. The kick is up, and it is good. So 3-0. Memphis takes the lead here at home. Not necessarily a bad start, but let's see what they can do defensively because San Diego's offense has been absolutely out of this world, really, in this league so far through three weeks. You got Mike Berkovici, he's lighting it up. Dante Ford, Jaquan Gardner. See what they can do, Mike Martz. Been coaching coaching very, very well. Mike Singletary, he's made some bad decisions that has really cost this team. And we'll see what they can do today on defense against San Diego. I mean, in week one, they put up 33 points. Week two, 28. And then last week, 40 points. This is going to be a tough one for the Express to try to contain. So, Austin McGinnis out of the field goal. He's on, and he will kick it away. So, San Diego going to get the ball. Back to receive is Brian Brown from about the two-yard line. Looking for some blockers. Cuts it up field. Takes it to about the 29-30 to give him the 30. So, now we're going to look at Mike Bergevici. And he's one of those guys that has been absolutely surprisingly phenomenal in this league so far. And honestly, in my opinion, definitely front runner for MVP right now. Through three games, 982 yards. Completing 62% of his passes, thrown 10 touchdowns, only one interception. He's got a QB rating of 124.2 in three games. And he's been playing against good defenses. He's been playing against Atlanta and San Antonio twice. He's been putting up some great numbers, but Memphis is probably the best defense he's faced so far. Let's see how he performs. Rainy conditions on the road. First and 10, back to throw is Berkovici. Big blitz, and that throw is going to be incomplete. Looking for Dantes Ford across the middle. That one gets away from these these slippery conditions. It's gonna make it tough. Let's look at this offense, and we want to focus on on this offense and how many weapons that they have. Jaquan Gardner, he's run, run for 166 yards on the season, averaging 5.4 yards a carry. But then you've got the wide receivers. You've got Dante Ford through three weeks, 352 yards and four touchdowns. I mean, this guy has been absolutely balling out. And then um, you go down the list a little bit. You got Nelson Spruce. Oh come on. My thing is being super glitchy right now, my stat sheet. Come on. All right. Second and 10 coming up from the 30. We'll get to those stats in a second. Off play action. Berkovici will throw. Going deep down the field, and he misses his man. That's incomplete. Looking for Ford again. 
We are dealing with some CPU issues, and I'm starting to regret letting this game be in the rain. But let's look at this defense. Sam Montgomery, Anthony Johnson on the ends. You got Montori Hughes and Terry Brady in there. Demarcus Gates and Andrew Jackson have been playing really great at the linebacker position. Solid guys right there. Brandon Maiden, Jeremy Couture up top. Brandon Maiden, uh, excuse me. Uh, Charles James, Arnold Tarpley. Got some big names there on the defense. I'm starting to get them mixed up. Trying to figure out what to do here with the CPU to try to get these plays to stop stopping in the middle. It's getting a little bit annoying. Third and ten. Big third down right now for San Diego. They do not want to start this game on a three out. Big blitz. Rips it across the middle. It's wide open, man, and it's caught. And somehow he got away. Brian Brown is going to take it to the end zone. Touchdown, San Diego. Unreal. That's a 70-yard score, and the fleet take the lead. Wow. Look at this. So it's a great throw. Brown gets in there, and it just missed tacklers. And with these raining conditions, it, Brown just is able to slip away and take it to the house. So just like that, Berger Vigis got a 70-yard touchdown. My goodness, that's his 11th touchdown of the season. Brian Brown does a lot of the work there for him, but hey, a touchdown is a touchdown. Wow. So Brian Brown is someone that we weren't really going to talk about. He's got 125 yards and a touchdown in the season. Nelson Spruce, 229 yards. Marcus Ball, the tight end, 218. These guys are nuts. Two-point conversion try. Big blitz. Gets it out. It's caught by Kenny Turn up field. He does. He is in. I think that's Marcus Ball. It is. How about that? So San Diego up 8-3 to three, just like that. And Mike March's crew is looking really solid. Bergevici, way to sense the pressure. Marcus Ball, just enough of an angle to get into the end zone for San Diego. Excellently done on both fronts. The offensive line with the blocking. And Bergevici sensing the pressure. And now Memphis and Johnny Manziel are going to have to find a way to respond here. I mean, this is a game where, you know, you're at home. You're 0-3. Your fans are expecting you to try to get a win. And we'll see what they can come up with. Just changing the CPUs on here quickly. Hopefully the faster. So, Donnie Hageman now. On to kick it away. Back to receive Terrence McGee from... Inside his 15. And he'll be taken down right at the 29. So that's where uh, Memphis will set up with the football. Apologize for my stutters and stuff like that at the moment. I'm trying to get this computer to just run faster so this stream looks good. Johnny Manziel coming back out, and yeah, we're struggling. First and 10 coming up from their own 29. Mike, they marched all the way down to the 5 and had a settle for a field goal, and that's what we've been talking about. This offense, the last few weeks, they've got to find a way to close things out with touchdowns. On the ground, it's Stacy slips a tackle, slips another tackle, picks up a nice block, and takes it to 33. It's going to set up 2nd and 6 now from the 33. So if you're, if you're Memphis right now, you're 0-3, you get a win here, then you play Atlanta next week. If you can string together a win there, you're 2-3 midway point with a big win over Atlanta. We drop, if you lose here, it just makes it really, really difficult to try to even make the playoffs. They try a quick screen, and oh my goodness! Dante's bird was lit up immediately. Not a chance, that was Demetrius right in there to blow that play up. The loss of two or three in the play, and not exactly how I think Mike Singletary imagined it. And again, yeah, these screens in Madden just really do not work well at all. So Bird loses a couple yards. He had a big game a couple weeks ago against Arizona. Huge third and eight right now for the Express, who it looked like they were getting some momentum, but after that nutty touchdown for Brian Brown, they haven't done much of anything. Back to throw is Manziel. Got to let ball go. He does. Deep down the field. Man wide open. And is it hauled in? No. Lucien cannot get it. And it's going to bring up fourth and eight. And one team going to have to come out for the express. And that is disappointing. That's a tough one because Manziel throws a nice pass here. 
I mean, it's just right in the bucket, but I don't think Lucien's able to get his feet. He does make the catch, but his feet just not in bounds. Maybe we'll get a challenge here, but or a boost for you, but I don't think we will. Ryan Winslow now on to punt it away for the Memphis Express. He will boot it away. Back to receive is Ron Brooks. And he's taken down immediately at the 25. So, decent start in field position for the Fleet, who had almost what looked like was going to be a 3 and out into a 70 yard touchdown. Mike Brigavici coming out of the field, and he's 1 for 3 with 70 yards and touchdown. So, I mean, can't complain about that. Let's see what this Fleet offense. They can keep things rolling. I mean, Mike Martz, he's done such an excellent job in San Diego. His team scores pretty much on will. Off by action, Jaquan Gardner still without a carry. Rifles it across the middle, and that time is incomplete. Still having CPU issues, and I'm trying to figure out what it is. I only have my audio recorder and Madden running right now. Maybe I just need to reboot my computer or something. Clear out some of the cache memory or whatnot. Second and ten. Coming up from the 25. And they go off play action again. All day for Bergevici to throw. Let's it rip, but it's out of bounds. So, again, another third and ten. And let's see if Memphis's defense can at least hold up and prevent another 70 yard touchdown or 75 yard touchdown in this case from happening. Yeah, this is a big game for Memphis, over, just generally speaking. If we look at the schedule, it's not going to be easy for them in that second half either. So, they're going to have to find a way to start picking up some wins. And this is a big third down right now. Pivotal part of this game, and Berkovici just has to throw it away. So, that's a big stop for Mike Singletary's defense, who he's a very defensive-minded player. Of course, obviously, you know, as a linebacker and someone who's been playing defense and then coaching defense, getting the head coach position here in Memphis. He wants to instill smash mouth football. Get back to the basics. He's happy with his defense right there, and I don't blame him. Great stop. Bergavici, only one completion, and it went for 70 yards and touchdown. Sam Irwin Hill now on to punt it away. That's a big stop for the Express defense, who needed to make something happen. Reese Horn to return it, and he'll be taken down right before midfield at their own 48 yard line. So, great starting field position right now for the Memphis Express. And out comes this offense. Terrence McGee and Zach Stacy, a couple guys there in the backfield that can do a lot of damage. One given opportunity. They've not seen much opportunity today. And I think Mike Singletary, especially in these rainy conditions, he's got to run the football a little bit more. Let's see what they do here. First and 10 from their own 48. Great field position. On the ground, it is Stacy. Met immediately. What a tackle by Lodoelli. Only a gain of about one on the play. But yeah, San Diego's defense has been... Absolutely phenomenal, and a couple of names on there. You got Ryan Muller, Cameron Kelly there as the safeties. You got Ron Brooks making plays. AJ Tarpley. I mean, they are stacked, and it's no wonder why they're two and one, and certainly one of the best teams in this league. Second and ten, and Johnny Manziel is going to take it himself with room to run. Manziel taking off, and I don't think anyone's going to catch him to the ten, the five, touchdown, Memphis. Johnny Manziel takes it 51 yards to the house. That's a play they've been trying to make work all season long. And it finally pays off. Johnny Manziel puts on the Jets and outruns that entire San Diego defense to put Memphis back on top here in the first quarter. What a play. And it pays off. We've seen him run that play several times. And he's fumbled. But in that time, he takes it over 50 yards of the house. And now a big two-point conversion to try to put him up by three points. To throw his Manziel pressured, and he's going to be absolutely smoked by John Lodowelli coming off of that blindside blitz. So Memphis is only going to be up by one, but it is a big touchdown. What a play there by Lodowelli. Big time stop. So 9-8 to eight Memphis leads, Johnny Manziel responds. And that's the type of stuff that we need to see more often from Memphis. I mean, they went down 8-3. 
Manziel rubs off a 51 yard run for the touchdown, puts them back on top 9 8. We'll see what Memphis's defense can do after their nice stop there forces a three and out. San Diego's only good play of the game has been that 70 yard touchdown. A lot of scoring here early in this game, or not even seven minutes into the first quarter. Memphis got ready to kick, kick the ball back off, and we'll see what Mike Mars wants to do offensively. Mike Bergvici has been a little bit off kilter right now with these rainy conditions on the road. It's cold. We'll see what he can do. Brian Brown on the return. Looking to cut it up field and taken down at the 28. So decent start, starting field position for the fleet. And again, we'll see what Mike Marks wants to come up with offensively. That incomplete, incomplete, 70-yard touchdown. Then the last drive, incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. In these rainy conditions, I don't know why you're not running the football more. Give Jaquan Gardner opportunity. Let him run the football. He's been such an excellent back for them. I don't see why they wouldn't give him more chances. And they go on the ground, but it's Terrell Watson who gets absolutely blasted in the backfield. Excellent stop made there by Latarius Brady. It's a loss of one on the play, pushing them back to 27. This Express defense, they are a sleeper defense. Yes, they've lost three games in a row, but that's mainly been because of just some offensive failures during the games. I mean, they've held their opponents to pretty low scoring through the first three weeks. Brings up second 11 for San Diego, and yeah, there has been a lot of momentum switches early on in this game. Second 11 now from the 27. Off play action. Bergevici in trouble. Barely gets rid of it and almost picked off. Memphis brought the house. Bergevici had to get rid of it fast. And he is 1 for 7 on the day. His only completion went for 70 yards because of that missed tackle on Brian Brown. Third and 11. Huge third down for the fleet. In this game that is just... This first quarter has been incredibly long. Back to throw. Berkovici all day and now pressured. He's going to have to get rid of it and he is not. Taken down by Latarius Brady who had a great tackle there on first down. Finishes off this drive with a sack and the express. Starting to pick up some momentum now. Took a 9-8 lead and now forced their second three and out in a row on a team that rarely goes three and out. I mean... San Diego has been phenomenal scoring points. I mean, they got eight in this first quarter, but last two drives, three and outs. And if it wasn't for you know that, that error there against Brian Brown, this could easily be three three and outs for the fleet. So Mike Marsh is going to have to try to figure something out here. These tough conditions for Mike Bergovici. But yeah, I mean, fourth and 22, obviously, Sam Aaron Hill on the punt away and let's see if Memphis's offense can keep things going in a good direction. He'll boot it away back to receive his Reese Horn. Takes it from the 50 makes a move and out of bounds at the Fleet 48. So again, phenomenal field position for the Fleet. Uh, excuse me, for the Express and let's see what they can make of it. And I love what Johnny Manziel's done so far in this game. You know, he ran for that big touchdown. He's made a couple great throws to Brandon Barnes. And let's see what he can do. Keep the momentum moving in the right direction here for Memphis. First and 10 from the 48. On the ground at Stacy. Looking for a hole in Zach Stacy. First down to the 36. And right now, Memphis has been running all over San Diego in this first quarter. Zach Stacy, 27 yards on the ground. Johnny Manziel, a 51-yard touchdown. And this is a San Diego Fleet defense that has played pretty solid overall. I mean, granted, they gave up three touchdowns to Kenneth Farrow last week, but it didn't matter because they controlled that game from the start. They took a 20-0 lead against San Antonio, and that was pretty much that. Commanders almost came back, but it was just too late. First and 10 now from the 36. Back to throw is Manziel. Going deep down the field, taking a shot to the end zone, and he misses his man. He had Dante's bird. Man, that's a throw I think he definitely wants back. Bird got behind the defenders. His safety was supposed to be over the top, but Bird got behind him as well. If that ball has just floated a bit more, it would have allowed Dante's to run underneath it and catch it for touchdown. 
They go on the ground, Stacy. Big hole again for Stacy, all the way down inside the 30 to the 27. The Express running the football well, and this is something that we've talked about. When they can run the football, it makes Johnny Mansell so much more effective as a quarterback and as a runner. And it just opens so many opportunities for Memphis, who, yeah, they've scored nine points in the first quarter. By far the most that they've scored in the first quarter so far. They scored eight last week, but chance to add more on here. Third and two, big third down. He's going to go to the sidelines. Oh, my. Dangerous pass and Loduelli in there to break it up. So it looks like Memphis is going to have to settle for three. And that's the type of stuff that we've seen Manziel make mistakes that we've seen him make the last couple of weeks. That was that could have easily been six the other way had Lodwelli just put up two hands instead of one. It's a great play from the linebacker, but sure Mike Martz is like, come on, man, make that interception. He's now McGinnis on for a 44-yard field goal attempt, one that he should definitely be able to make. One of the best kickers in this league so far. Hit from 22 earlier, this one from 44 on its way and it is good 12-8 Memphis leads they scored 12 points in this first quarter a solid kick from McGinnis and Memphis extends their lead but hey here's the one issue that I have with Memphis right now and that's the fact that they've had to settle for two field goals on drives that have looked really solid you go back to that first drive that is settled for 22 yarder here they settle for the 44 yarder but you know a couple a couple different plays um, if, if Manziel makes that throw to Dante's Bird, they're up by two scores right now. So, you know, just things you got to take in con into consideration as an offense. They've kind of, with the exception of that crazy Brian Brown touchdown, Memphis has absolutely dominated this game, yet they're only winning by four points. And stuff like this, it comes to bite them. We'll see what happens. Brian Brown in the return, and he is met immediately at the 27. And we are still in this first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. This game has been going for almost half an hour. Crazy stuff. It's going to be a long game to record and export and get up to YouTube. Unless somehow the next quarters go fast. First and 10 coming up now from their own 27. 12-8 Memphis lead, but Fleet only needs a big play and they get right back into it. See if they finally get let Garner get his first carry. No, they won't. Off play action, Bergovici going deep, got a man, it's caught. Nelson Spruce first down to the 43. His only a second completion of the day. Two for eight. Completing only 25% of his passes, yet it's only a four-point game, and he threw a 70-yard touchdown. It's a great route, and the defense breaks down there, lets Nelson Spruce, one of the best route runners in this league, just get wide open there. And this should take us to... Finally, the end of the first quarter. Ready up. And it does. At the end of one. 12-8, the hometown Express looking their first for their first win of the season. They're 0-3, but they're up 12-8 here against the San Diego Fleet, who are 2-1. Certainly, the underdogs in this match, the Express, they have a lot of work to do. Only up by four. Let's see if their defense can make another stop. Back to throw with Berkovici. Quick pass and is knocked away. Another dangerous throw from Mike. Not at his best day so far. The interesting thing about Berkovici, which we saw in week two, we saw it somewhat in week three, is even though he throws a lot of passes that are, you know, inaccurate, they're never intercepted. I mean, he's only thrown one interception this season, but I think he could easily have four or five if those throws are a little bit closer to defenders, which is it's a good thing for Berkovici, but... Some of the mistakes that we've seen from other quarterbacks, he just hasn't made. Off play action, they're still passing. Rips it, and it's a man wide open. Big completion all the way down to Memphis's 43. Dantes Ford finally gets his first catch of the day. They look for him a few times. And those stats just kind of sum up Bergavici. I mean, 3 for 10, but 100 yards and a touchdown. Look at this dart he fires, and it's a great catch by Ford, able to hang on underneath despite the rain and the, the tough conditions. It's a great play. Sets up the fleet nicely here. First and 10 for Memphis is 43, and they're starting to make it. I mean, funny thing is, I mean, a good drive here to score a touchdown, you're right back on top. So, see if the Express defense can try to get some sort of momentum back. Finally, the first, actually, no, it's Terrell Watson, who again gets the ball. 
and taking down behind the line of scrimmage again. So Jaquan Garner has not gotten a carry this game. I think that's a big mistake from Mike Marks. I mean, obviously he's a coach. I'm not. They're two and one. They're playing well, but a lot of their success has been because of their running game and the loss that they had against Atlanta. Um, in week two, Jaquan Gardner only had 15 yards. In both of the other games, he had plenty of yards. Uh, week one, week one against San Antonio. It's not letting me view the comment here. Week one against San Antonio, he had 87 yards. Week three against San Antonio, he had 64, but that was on just nine carries. So they got to get him involved. Second 11 now from the 44. Off play action, and Bergovici is lit up. What a play from Jeremy Coutrer on the safety blitz is a loss of seven, and Mike Bergovici had absolutely nowhere to go. It's going to bring up third and 18. He just comes around the edge completely unblocked and on play action. Just never saw the man coming. Great play call there from Mike Singletary on defense. It's going to bring up third and 18. Tough spot for the fleet to be in after a drive that looked pretty solid. But hey, I mean, they have been phenomenal on third downs throughout the season. Let's see what they can do here on third and 18. Big blitz again. Going across the middle, and it's incomplete. Looking for Brian Brown. Brigavici, 3 for 11 to start this game, and the Fleet are going to have to punt for the third time in a row after a drive that was really starting out well. Stalled out, and it's a big sack there from Couture that kind of put San Diego in a tough spot. Fourth and 18, and they're going to have to send the punter out there again. Sam Irwin Hill for the third time today he'll boot it away back to receive Reese Warmer is going to let it bounce and it takes a perfect bounce for San Diego Memphis is stuck at the two that's a beautiful punt and excellent special teams from the fleet and hey it's stuff like this that gets your team back into it your offense has been in a bit of a rut and the special teams comes out and makes a play like that that's what you need Johnny Manziel, he's been playing a good game so far. You know, a couple of errors, but so far the damage has been minimal. One problem is, they have had a sell for two field goals and now backed up with their own two. Tough spot to be in offensively. Let's see if they can get out of this. On the ground, Stacy trying to bounce to the outside with a big hole, but there is a flag and... Oh my. And... Looks like they're going to get first down back. That is very, very strange. First and 10 now from the two. Same play. Stacy up the middle, and he only picks up about two on the play. Second and nine now coming up from the four. Second and nine, and Memphis in a tough spot right now. He's a little bit confused by what that penalty was, but again, Madden doesn't really know what they're doing half the time. Second and nine from their own four. Let's see what the play call is from Singletary. Probably going to stick it on the ground with Stacy, and they will. Big hole for Zach Stacy. Takes it up to the ten. Zach Stacy has been playing a nice game today. I mean, he's been running the football well and just playing a good game. And even if they don't get this first down here. You gotta love what you're seeing from Zach Stacy on the ground and the offensive line, giving him some nice holes. Big third and two for the Express. Let's see if they can convert and keep this drive going. That started their own two. On the ground is Stacy again, and he's met, but I think he gets the first. He does. Morwelly comes from behind and blasts him past the first down marker. What is he doing? AJ Tarpley blows this play up and then Lodoelli lets him just just bounces him right to the first down marker. So that does not make any sense and it's a rare mistake from Lodoelli who's made a couple great plays today but it keeps his drive moving for Memphis. First and 10 from the 12. Back to throw with Manziel for the first time on this drive. Let's it rip across the middle, and it's caught. Nice throw in heavy traffic to Dantes Bird. First down to the 24. And we look at the schedule right now. San Diego, they're 2-1. and one. 
if they can't find a way to win this game, then they're going up against 4-0 Salt Lake next week. They could easily be 2-3 and or 4-1 and going to, uh, halfway. So uh, there's a lot up in the air, and a lot of it is riding on how they perform today. First and 10. And Johnny Manziel going to take it himself. This time, it's not very successful. Cameron Kelly blows it up. That's a loss of one on the play. Miles Nash in there along with Cameron Kelly. San Diego Fleet defense is mean. It's not, you know, it's not a bad play call there. They haven't run that play too much today, and it worked to perfection on the first attempt, so... I feel like the last couple of weeks they've been running it when they shouldn't have, but I'm not I'm not too upset with that call right there. It's not a bad call. Second and 11 now from their own 23. Let's see what they decide to do here in these rainy, tough conditions here in Memphis. And they run the same play in Manziel with room to run, and Manziel taken off down the field. First down to the 41, and Johnny Manziel, we're seeing him flash his athleticism on a couple big yar uh, r yards picked up. 70 yards on the ground for him here in this first half. Look at this. I mean, it's just perfectly executed again. Great lead blocking up front. And Manziel able to find the hole. And hey, why not run that play if it's working? Mike Singletary must have seen something in the defense. He's like, let's run it again. And hey, it's good coaching. First and 10 now from the 41. Manziel to throw. With time, lets it outside. It's caught. Reese Horn. But he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage, if that. If anything, he lost a yard, and that's not a, not exactly the way you want to start again. First and ten, you lose another yard. Reese Horn, a guy, one of the best receivers in this league on paper, but he hasn't seen a whole lot of production. And so far, San Diego's done a good job of shutting him down in this game. Now, something I want to get back to, though, is San Diego, yeah. I mean, they win here against Memphis. They definitely have a chance to beat Salt Lake. That game's like 50-50 in the air, so if you're 2-2... Two and two, and then you lose to Salt Lake, you're 2-3. and three. Meanwhile, you beat Memphis, you beat Salt Lake, you're 4-1, and, and lead the division. So, anything can happen. And they go with the same play again, and Manziel can't get off his man. Demontre Moore in there for another tackle for loss. He's had a couple today. Brings up third and 12, and a, a good-looking drive from Memphis might just stall out here. Moore makes a great play on this ball, and let's look at Memphis in the schedule so quick. I haven't talked about them, so they're playing San Diego, they're 0-3. You think if they if they win this game, and if they can somehow beat Atlanta in Atlanta, they're 2-3 and three at the halfway point, and yes, they've got a tough schedule against Salt Lake, Birmingham, Orlando, San Antonio, Atlanta down the stretch, but they can make it happen with all the talent that they have. 3rd and 12, big play. Can they make it happen? He's just going to check it out. It's complete. Brandon Barnes, but only gets him to the 42, and they're going to have to punt away this football. Singletary, not too happy, and I don't blame him. I mean, that was a good-looking drive. They were able to squeak out of it there at the on that first first down that was picked up with that tackle that pushed him for the first down, and now Ryan Winslow has to punt it away. From about his own 32, boots it away. Back to receive is Ron Brooks from the 15. Trying to look for a lane, lowers his shoulder and takes it to the 27 and we just don't get it. that just doesn't get us at a two minute warning so San Diego coming out Mike Bergavici interesting stats 3 for 1100 yards and a touchdown so he hasn't turned over the football but he has not been very accurate at all so let's see what he can do to improve upon that and his team yeah I mean they, they've they been kind of dominated by Memphis yet they're only down by 4 score here they get it for half I mean they're looking in good shape Bergavici with all day to throw and guess what He's going to go down again. That's Latarius Brady's second sack of the day. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. 12-8 Memphis with the lead here at home. In a game that really is a must-win for Memphis. And it's kind of sad that you're in a must-win position here in week four. But, you know, with three tough losses throughout the season, that's just the way it is for the Express. And, you know, they're taking on this challenge. Week four against a team that is 2-1 and one and played some great football. They're making the most of it right now. Second and 19. Bergavici lets it rip. Misses his man. He has struggled with throwing the football today in these raining conditions. I think they're just getting to him. And again, it's a nutty touchdown that they got that, you know, really should... I'm not saying that they shouldn't have gotten it, but it's a play that Memphis should have stopped. That's what I'm saying. 
Third and 19, and things not looking on the up on this drive either. Fleet have had to punt three straight times and kind of looking like a fourth unless they miraculously get it first. Jaquan Gardner finally gets his first carry of the day. So they just kind of accept the fact that they have the punt. And Memphis uses the timeout. It's going to be the fourth straight punt for San Diego, a, a team that has been phenomenal offensively. And, and again, one of their only positive plays of this game was that nutty 70-yard touchdown to Brian Brown. It's the tackle. Mike Bergervici has got to find a way to turn this thing around because he's not looking too good right now. Three for 12. Erwin Hill, who booted away and still time for Memphis to score if they can make something happen. Reese Horn, fair catch at the 33. So Memphis has to go, you know, at least give or take 35, 40 yards if they want to get into field goal range. Let's see what they can do. And I love how they keep showing Terrence McKee, even though he's done absolutely nothing today. Typical Madden. Why not show Manziel stats? Why not show Zach Stacy? Um, <laughs> first and 10 now from the 33. Let's see what Singletary calls here on first down. He wants to be aggressive. Manziel back to throw. Quick, quick pass, and it's caught, and he lost the football, and it's picked up by San Diego. And Cameron Kelly's got it, and he's going to go into the end zone for a San Diego touchdown. Unreal. Turnovers are what have killed Memphis the last couple weeks. And that is absolutely awful. It's a quick pass. It's a nice catch by Zach Stacy, But he just loses the football. It's a great play. By, um... Trying to find out who 42 is. But it's a great play there. It strips the ball. And Cameron Kelly, who's had a few huge plays this season. Wow. Just like that. And th this is nuts. I mean, just two fluke plays... That have given San Diego the lead in this game. And it's stuff like this that Memphis just, they just keep shooting themselves in the foot. Painful to watch. San Diego though. The defense. They had six turnovers last week. And a huge one there. Up 14-12. Can they add on the two-point conversion? They're one for one of the day. Bergevici will throw it. With time now pressured, and he's going to be taken down by Montori Hughes. So that doesn't go anywhere. San Diego held the 14 points, but man, I mean, that is. That hurts so much for Memphis because. They forced four straight punts, and they're somehow losing this game. And it's a game like this, you know, you drop the 0-4 in another game where you're in a position where you could have won. Again, we've got a whole half and a minute and a half to play as well here in the second quarter. But it's just tough. And Mike Martz, I mean, he's just finding a way to get it done with this team. And these guys, they're scrappy, but they're efficient, especially that defense. Memphis, though, with a minute and a half and still two timeouts. So let's see what they can come up with here. After that turnover from Zach Stacy, that turned into six points for San Diego. Terrence McGee on the return. Looking for some blockers. Doesn't really get any. Taken down to 25. So just under a minute and a half from Memphis's offense to try to do something. I mean, you march down, you get at least get in a field goal range. If you take the lead. We'll see. Zach Stacy, finally, there's a stat. 10 carries, 46 yards. He's had a great day, but it's the fumble there on that reception. Just stuff like that. We, we saw back in week one, remember? Birmingham was up by a few points. Memphis ready to take the lead, and Johnny Manziel fumbled on the two-yard line. Right now, first and 10. Manziel, quick shot. It's caught. Devin Lucy in his first catch of the day. And he takes it up to the 40. So, nice gain. I think we're going to watch this clock run down to 101, and then they'll call a timeout, but... Nice gain of 15 on, to open up this drive, and they're going to have to get moving quickly. Nice crossing route. Gets to the sticks. See if they get this play off here. First and 10. They will. Back to throws Manziel. With time. Going deep down the field. Incomplete. Overthrows Brandon Barnes. Second and 10. Two timeouts left for the Express from their own 40. But yeah, I mean, it is nuts. 
when you consider the fact that the Express, they've outplayed San Diego. San Diego's two scores have come on a fumble six and a crazy 70-yard touchdown and a missed tackle. That's all that they've done this game, yet they have a 14-12 lead. Back to throw is Manziel. With time, rips to the sidelines and it is intercepted! Picked off by San Diego, but there is a flag. Wow. So that's on Demetrius Wright. Looked like he came up with the interception, but instead it gives Memphis a free first down to the 48 of San Diego. Wow. First and 10 now. Let's see what they do. Back to throw is Manziel. Checks it down. That's caught. Lucian to the 43. And now he's... Looks like he's a bit injured. We got to use the timeout there. Looks like he was walking out the field himself, so we'll see what the injury is all about. On the bench there, looks like he's in pain. Try to get an update on him later. Second and six coming up from the Fleet 43, and that's tough because now Memphis had to blow a timeout on a gain of only four, but we go back. I know Demetrius right, pass interference there, but it didn't really look like he had a commit PI. So that's just, you know, a kind of stupid play on his part. Just make the interception. Second and six, Mike Singletary. See what he can do to get his team back into into the swing of things here. 51 seconds to go in the half. Ma uh, back to throw is Manziel. Let's it rip. It's caught. Reese Horn lost the football again. And it's picked up by Ron Brooks. And he's going down the sidelines with room to run. Can he break Janzel's tackle? What a what a tackle. I mean, that was his second fumble here in the final two minutes of this half. I know it's raining. I know it's tough conditions. But Memphis just continues to shoot themselves in the foot. Reese Horn, he's got to hang on to that football. Ron Brooks couldn't outrun Mandel. Valiant effort there. Let's get another look at this. I want to see, does that ball come out after he's down is the question. I kind of think this should go to booth review. Bergevici has not had a good day, by the way. Um, I... From that angle, it looked like he could have been down, but looks like we're not going to get a booth review. First and 10 now from Memphis is 31 with three timeouts. Back to throw is Bukovici. All day. He's just got to get rid of the football. He finally does, and it's caught. Face mask. Wow. Unbelievable. Arnold Tarbley gets called for unnecessary roughness. I mean, he's just going to make a tackle. That is a horrible call from the refs. Everything going San Diego's way right now here in these final two minutes of the half. Now first and ten from the 15, and all receivers spread by Bergovici is very dangerous in the red zone. Let's it rip. Oh, man. DeMarcus Gates was in a position to make an interception. I don't know why he didn't just back up and make the play. Second and ten. That was dangerous. Second and ten coming up from Memphis is 15. As this game has been going on a very, very long time. Back to throw. Bergovici with time. It, whoa, another dangerous throw from Bergovici. Broken up by Charles James. Sets up third and ten. I mean, Memphis' defense is playing phenomenal. They're hardly giving up a thing. Yet, they're still losing this game. Just bad breaks. And Reese Horn and Zach Stacy, they've got to hold on to the football there. That's terrible. Third and ten. Big blitz. Bernardici with all day to throw the football. Let's it go. It's caught. Nelson Spruce. But he's down at the three. Now they have to use their first time out. It took them a year and a half, but finally, the pick up first down, and now first and goal from the three gives them some options here. They got two timeouts, 17 seconds, plenty of time and, and opportunities here for the fleet to try to add on another touchdown, and remember, they get it for half, so this game has just been very, this game has been wild. You wonder if they give it to Jaquan Gardner here. First and goal from the three. No, Bergevici will throw. Blind side lets it rip, and that was a dangerous pass. Looking for Spruce. Another one that could have been picked. I mean, he's 5 for 17 in this half. 
Johnny Manziel has been playing a great game. He hasn't. He's made hardly any mistakes. Then we got a couple pick, uh, passes that could have been picked. But besides that, he's been efficient. Yet it's been the offense that's been letting him down today. Second and goal now from the three. See the play call is from Mike Marks. This is intense right now. Big blitz again, and it's dropped in the end zone. Brian Brown had a touchdown earlier. Was wide open. It's a nice throw from Rick Ricky, but now it brings up third and goal from the three. These rainy conditions are making it very difficult for both of these quarterbacks and wide receivers. Probably expect to see them go through the air again. I mean, they have they've run the football like three times today. Back to throw. Berkovici with time. Wide open. It's caught. Touchdown, Dantes Ford. That is his fifth touchdown of the season. Wow. So the fleet add on to their lead right before half, and Memphis's defense just unable to make the final stand there on third and goal. And that's just blown coverage. Simple as that. Ford is wide open. It's a great play, great execution. Berkovici, his 12th touchdown of the season. Dantes Ford, his fifth. These guys are absolutely insane. 20 to 12, and now Memphis is going to have to hope that they can come up with a stop here on this two point conversion to at least keep it a one score game. So Memphis has now given up um, 12 points to the fleet, possibly 14, here in these final two minutes of the second quarter because of fumbles. Turnovers, again, are killing Memphis today. Two-point try for Brigovici. Back to throw. Wide open. It's caught. Marcus Ball, 22-12, to the fleet lead here in Memphis, and they are starting to take control, and this is what they do. They create turnovers, and then they throw the ball all over the place. Find a way to get it done, and Bergevici, his completion percentage is well under 50%, but he's throwing two touchdowns. His team's up by 10. It's a messy game. You know, you really can't ask for more. Mike Singletary, repping two hats. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So seven seconds, obviously really no time for anything from Memphis. Kick off from Donnie Hageman. Terrence McGee on the return. Taken down at the 26, so three seconds on the clock. And it'll probably take us to halftime. Manziel on the it, and Memphis has a lot of work to do here in the second half. But what a crazy first half it has been. It's been wild between the rain. We've seen Johnny Manziel rip a big run. We have seen Memphis turn over the ball twice. We've seen defensive scores from San Diego. We've seen Dante's Ford scores fifth touchdown of the season. Wild stuff here in Memphis. 22-12, the fleet lead over the Express. And I'm going to take this moment to let you guys know that if you want to support this channel, I mean, we put a lot of time and work into making this thing possible. And we have a merch store just launched down in the description below check it out if you want to pick up some af simulated merch or if you don't want to do that just feel like sending us a few bucks there's a paypal link in the description where you can do that of course no pressure if you guys don't want to that's totally fine just keep watching keep supporting us we really appreciate it either way we love and appreciate your support we welcome you right back to memphis the express were dominating that first half 12-8 lead in the last two minutes they fell apart gave up 14 points to san diego but off of two fumbles Stuff that just kills this team. These turnovers have killed Memphis, and I can't express it enough. Mike March just does such an excellent job of creating points off of these turnovers, whether it's the defense that takes it to the house or the offense that capitalizes on them. And they have a 10-point lead here as we head into the second half. This game has been a very, very, very long game. Awesome again is on a punter way, uh, kick it away and it's tough that San Diego also gets the ball here for half. On the return is Brian Brown. Trying to make a move. Taken down at the 27. And that's where the fleet will set up shop. So we're going to get another look here. Second half, Mike Vici and his squad. And he's not had a great day, but he's thrown two touchdowns. His team's up by 10. And now let's see what the fleet can do here. In the third quarter, can this offense start pulling away, putting this game away? We've seen them 
you know, they blew that 20-9 lead against Atlanta in Week 2. Can Memphis have a comeback of their own here? I mean, it's definitely not out of the question. On the ground, Gardner with a big hole. Jaquan Gardner breaking loose. Making a move and making an amazing Jaquan Gardner on the first play of the half. He's going to take it the distance. The 10-5. to Touchdown, San Diego. 73 yards and Gardner's second touch of the day goes to the house. These fleet are rolling. All hands are on deck. And this is a team that I think can really make a legitimate championship run. They are blowing this thing open. And what a move by Gardner on Jeremy Couture. Wow. 28 to 12. Gardner, I think he was mad. He did not get any opportunities there in that first half. And he was angry. He was like, Coach, give me the damn ball. Two point conversion now. Berkovici back to throw. Let's go. And it's off the mark for Dante's Ford. So it stays a two score game, at least for Memphis's sake. 28 12. And just like that. I mean, this game has just gone haywire for the Express. Who again, I mean, <laughs> they have played such a good first half. It's crazy. It really is nuts. And Mike Singletary has just got to be disgusted with the way his team has looked. So just like that, one play, 73 yards, touchdown. San Diego extends their lead. And now let's see how Johnny Manziel and the Memphis Express can respond. Plenty of time for the Express to make a comeback. We've seen them make comebacks in these games. Down uh, Birmingham, they were down 12 to 3. They came back and took a 19-18 lead. Just couldn't hang on to it. Last week against Orlando, they were down 18-11. They scored a touchdown. Just couldn't get the two-point conversion. Then they marked down again. Just couldn't find something. Just couldn't kick the field goal. Terrence McGee takes up the 30. So let's see. Did the Memphis Express have any life left in them? This home crowd came out in the rain, and it's just been nuts. And Zach Stacy started with him with that fumble. Cameron Kelly took it to the house. It's been all downhill since since then. First and ten now from round thirty. On the ground, Stacy bounces the outside, gets around him, makes a nice move. First down carry for the Express. Stacy. And actually taking it. Wow. Surprised they didn't give it to him. Second and one. That looked like he had more than enough. But I guess not. Second and one now. Coming up from the 40. For the Express. See what the play call is here. I mean, they just have like an inch to go. They stick on the ground. Stacy, a big hole. Zach Stacy to the 46. And he has 61 yards in the day. One of his best games so far. And again, this is what Memphis does when their offense can get their running game going. They're efficient. They're effective. And man, just go back to a couple of plays in the first half. This could be a much closer game. And Manziel going to take it himself and can't go anywhere. Great tackle there on the exterior. Tanella Topu with the play. Look at the San Diego defense, though, and they've just been outstanding. And, and just the way that they create turnovers is incredible. They picked off Logan Woodside five times last week, and here they forced two fumbles. And this is a game where, you know, it's rainy. You might not get the interceptions. We've seen them drop a couple interceptions, but guess what? They've made up for it. Knowing that the ball is going to be slippery and messy, they've gone for the ball. They've knocked it out twice and recovered it both times. Again, it's Manziel takes off and picks up a first down to the... San Diego 43, so Johnny Manziel really trying to put the team on his back here with these runs, and I don't even know if Mike Singletary called that. I think he just took it himself, saw the opportunity and took it, ran with it, literally, and it's a good play. Plenty of time in this game. If, if Manziel can get his team down the field, they score a touchdown here, get the two-point conversion, they are right back in this game, so it looked good on the first couple of drives. Let's see what they can do. Stacy on the ground and met immediately. Great play call there on the blitz. Cameron Kelly, we've seen him all over the place today. And Stacy barely gets back to the line. 
Second and ten now from the 43. See the play call is here from Singletary. They've had a nice drive here. They've got to find a way to close it out with points and ultimately a touchdown. They've kicked two field goals today. And they let Manziel take it again, and why not? A.J. Tarpley rocks him at the 38, but gets him about five yards closer to the stick. So third and five. In this sort of situation, I love to see him. Look, they've got a lot of weapons there on the offense. Why, give Dante's bird a nice little crossing route across the middle, something like that. Maybe even get Fabian Gura, Gura into the game. I think he's filling in right now for Devin Lucien. Back to the Rose Manziel with time. Across the middle, and hey, there you go. That's the reception there to the 33. Did he get enough for the first down? He does. And who is it but Fabian Gura? Whoa. I am mind blown. That's exactly what I told him to do. That's exactly... I'm, I'm Tony Romo, guys. I think I'm turning into Tony Romo. I'm in a state of shock. I called the play. And it's mad. It's not even real life. Wow. First and ten now from the 33. What a huge conversion and a big spot. I mean, it looked that was awfully close. This drive keeps moving. On the ground, Zach Stacy sheds a tackler. Trying to turn it up field. Gets it inside the 30 to 27. So the Express once again are moving the football. And it's going to get to the point where can they actually close things out with a touchdown? Got down to the five. Had to kick a 22-yard field goal to open up the game. Then they get down about around the 20-yard line and they settle for a 44-yard field goal. The missed touchdown opportunity to Dante's Bird. Can they close out this drive? Second and four. McGee in the backfield and he gets the carry. Trying to cut it up field, taking down the 25. So a couple yards short. It's going to bring up a big third and two. And this is exactly what I was just talking about. Can they find a way to finish out this drive? You know, he settled for a field goal here. With under four and a half, with under four and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. He's starting to raise your white flag a bit. Huge. Huge play. Let's see what the play call is. From single Terry. Manziel back to throw. Quick pass. It is dropped by Reese Horn. Wow. That is disappointing. Horn was open. It was a perfectly designed play. And it just goes off his hands, and I know the rain plays a factor, but you've got to prepare for this stuff. You've got to be ready for these situations. And Johnny Manziel couldn't be doing any more than what he's been doing today. He's made a couple mistakes, but he's playing a great game. And now Austin McGinn is on for a 42-yard field goal attempt here in the rain. Knocked it through from 44. Let's see if we can at least get Memphis three points. Kick is on its way, and it's through. Austin McGinn is three for three on the day. And Memphis got the lead to 13, but still a lot of work to do with only about 14 minutes left in this game. Austin McGinnis has been one of the best kickers in this league. Week 1, bang through a 54-yarder. Then in week 2, uh, he actually didn't get any kicks then. Then week 3, he was solid. Been a great kicker, three for three today. And San Diego, let's see how their offense responds. I mean, they have had three touchdowns that have just kind of come out of nowhere and given them a huge lead. Jaquan Gardner kicked things off with a 73 yard touchdown run in this quarter. On their turn, Brian Brown takes it to 29. Let's see how the fleet responds to the field goal. And here's the thing Memphis. Turn over the ball twice. San Diego, none. They've been the cleanest team in this league when it comes to turnovers. <laughs> and look at that. Brooke of Eiji, 6-19. 116 yards, but two touchdowns. I mean, it's just got the strangest stats. First and 10 from the 29. San Diego up by 13. Ken Memphis' defense. They forced four punts in a row. On the ground, it's Watson who is lit up. He has not found any running room at all. Excellent tackling inside as Davis Toll along with Brandon Maiden brings up second and 11.
So Memphis starting to make some things happen defensively on that play. Let's see if they can use that play to gain some momentum. Down by 13. Getting closer to the fourth quarter. This defense has got to find a way to get a stop. And we go to those two fumbles that have killed Memphis this game. It's killed them on the season. Got to find a way to turn it around. Blitz. Pergavici is going to go down. Huge sack from Drew Andrew Jackson at the 21. This defense has been relentless today. And even though San Diego has put up 28 points, this defense has had to put up with two fumbles, one of which was returned for a touchdown. 73-yard touchdown run out of nowhere. They have not made a lot of mistakes. It's just San Diego has found some crazy ways to score. But what a sack from Andrew Jackson not giving up on this play and getting home on Bergevici. That is the fourth sack of the day for this express defense. Third and 18. They need this stop. Desperately. See what Bergevici can come up with. Back to throw. Memphis brings a blitz. Just checks it outside. It's caught. Gardner, but it only goes for three yards. And the Express get a huge defensive stop when they need it. And now it's going to come down to whether or not their offense can close out these drives. They've had to settle for three field goals today. And those three field goals are the difference on the scoreboard. Mike Singletary, let's see what he can get done here with his offense. San Diego obviously going to have to punt. Sam Irwin Hill on to punt it away for the fifth time today. Yet San Diego has a 28-15 lead. Boots it away. Back to receive is Reese Horn, who has not had his best day. And he is rocked at the 33-yard line. So that's where Memphis will set up shop with a minute 56 to play in the third quarter. So plenty of time. You know, Memphis marches down the field right now. They're in pretty good shape. If they can score a touchdown. That's been the big question mark this entire season. Week one, week two, week three. They have not been able to score touchdowns when they really needed to. And again, in week four, three field goals on the day. On the ground, Zach Stacy with a nice hole. Lowers his shoulder, picks up about four on first down. And he's got over 70 yards today. And again, the offense does so much better when Zach Stacy gets involved. Week one, he had 40 yards and touchdown. Week two, only 20 yards. And week three, he had 45 yards and only eight carries. He just hasn't been given a lot of chances today. He's been making the most of them. 15 carries, 71 yards. Second and six now. They try a quick screen. It's caught by Dante's Bird, trying to get an angle around the edge. Picks up the first down to the 44. So that time the screen works. At least somewhat. Picks up the first down. First and 10 coming up from their own 44. And let's see. Memphis, they've got to keep moving the chains here. And time is going to become a factor here. We're under a minute in the third quarter. They're still down by two scores. They've got to make something happen pretty quickly here. See what they can do. Version 10 from the 44. Back to throw his Manziel. Just checks it out and is that caught? And no, he's out of bounds looking for Brandon Barnes. Not exactly the type of play that they would want to start with there on first down. Second and 10 now from the 44. See what the Express can do. Down by 13. They're 0-3. They need a big win here at home to turn the season around. And Johnny Manziel going to take it himself and spins his way up to the 49. That's a gain of 5. Set up a huge third and 5 here as we're under 30 seconds in the third quarter. I don't think we'll see another play here. Unless they manage to get it off. Third and five. See what the play call is, although we won't get to see it right now because it's the end of the third quarter. The San Diego Fleet, they're two and one, and they lead 28 to 15. The Memphis Express, 0 and three. They desperately need this win, and they have just shot themselves in the foot continuously throughout this game. Those two fumbles there within the final two minutes of the first half gave San Diego 14 points, and that's pretty much a differential in this game. Third and five. Huge play to start the fourth quarter. Manziel. Across the middle. It is dropped. Incomplete looking for Fabian Gura. He cannot hang on. And that's tough. Gura, one of the backup wide receivers, in for the injured Devin Lucian. 
And that's right in his hands. You know, Johnny Manziel, the last couple weeks, we've talked about him needing to put the team on his shoulders and get the job done. He has done that today. His team has not supported him at all. And now, it has, shoot, they're going for it here on 4th and 5. From their own 49, this could very well be the game. Back to throw is Manziel. With time. Lofts it, and it's incomplete. Looking in the direction of Reese Horn. Memphis can't convert, and San Diego gets a huge defensive stop, and it, Fabian Gura had the first down there on third down. They just can't convert. You know, it's just week after week. It's like we're kind of watching the same thing over and over again. The offense just not finding a way to get it done in these critical situations, and now the defense. They've done what they can. They've done all that they can, and I could easily... I mean, great field position now for Memphis is 49. San Diego in a great spot to try to put the nails in the coffin here. On the ground, it's Gardner, and he is taken down immediately by Jeremy Couture. Brings up second and 10. And again, I mean, this Memphis defense, we've seen them make plays. We've seen them flying in, making sacks, making tackles. They just have not been able to find a way to get it done on offense. And it's just what's been plaguing them this entire season. Second and 10 from the 49. All play action. Berkovici will throw. All day. Now just checks it out to Ben Johnson, who loses yardage. That's a loss of five and a terrible decision for Berkovici. Johnson can't turn up field. Third and 15 now. So Memphis, again, their defense doing everything that they can. And what a shame that Memphis doesn't have more than 15 points because they're still down by two scores. And it props to San Diego for playing phenomenal, but it's just disappointing to see Memphis make the same mistakes over and over again as this is another big defensive stop here. After San Diego got handed the ball past midfield, and they went backwards three yards. This defense has been playing a great game, and it's just this lack of consistency on the offense that has put Memphis in a position to go 0-4. I mean, they need to score very, very quick right now. They need, like, one of those Raquan Gardner 73-yard runs just to the house. Time continuing to run as we're nearing close to eight minutes on this clock. Sam Irwin Hill to punt it for the sixth time. Reese Horn to receive. And it bounces off him and goes out of bounds. Reese Horn has played a horrendous game today. The fumble, a drop first down when they needed it. That could have very well been the nail in the coffin if San Diego recovered that. So out comes Johnny Manziel. He's had bad breaks today. And now from their own 12 with only 8-10 to play. They've got to find a way to just close out these drives. And they have not been able to do it. First and 10 now from the 12. Back to throw is Manziel. Quick pass is incomplete. Looking in the direction of Brandon Barnes. 12 for 23, only 103 yards in the day for Manziel. He's got almost 70 yards on the ground and a touchdown, though. Remember, he should have a lot more yardage. I mean, these receivers are dropping passes. They're fumbling the football. Look at that. I mean, Memphis is dominated when it comes to yards. Deep shot across the middle, and he's off the mark. Incomplete. Third and ten. It looks like Devin Lucian is, in fact, back in the game. He's had a couple deep, uh, crazy catches this season, Lucian, on some deep passes. They need one of those here. They just need some miraculous 80 yard touchdown or something like that. Manziel to throw. With time. Gotta let it go. And now he just checks it and it's intercepted! Picked off by San Diego. He's going to pick it up. And finally taking down the 15. That's Jordan Martin. And that is a crusher. Just trying to check it out. Just had to get rid of it. And he throws it at the wrong guy. Third turnover of the day for Memphis. And Johnny Manziel had a couple passes close to being picked off. And that one, I mean, just right to the defender. And after all of this, San Diego is going to have probably at least 30 points. Even though Memphis' defense has done a spectacular job. Bernard has had 
well over 300 yards in every single game. So they got 116 today. First and 10 now from the 15. Back to throw is Brickovici. I'm surprised they're even passing. Checks it outside and it's incomplete looking for Gardner. I mean, 9 for 23. He has been very inaccurate with the football today. Brings up 2nd and 10 from the 15. And again, I mean, if Memphis' defense can somehow hold them to a field goal here, they're not completely out of it. But with the way this offense has looked, just the inconsistency and the poor play, it's been tough. Bergovici, quick slant, is caught, and waltzing into the end zone is Nelson Spruce. Touchdown, San Diego, and Bergovici has thrown his third touchdown of the day, 13th of the season. 34-15, and the fleet continue to pile on the points. Just simply executed, but to perfection. And the San Diego fleet, all hands on deck. Wow. We've had a touchdown scored by several different fleet in this game, including defense with Cameron Kelly. 34-15, the fleet ready to take a potential 21-point lead here in this game. See what they can do here on the two-point conversion. They go on the ground as Gardner fighting his way, and he won't get there. Good tackle by Memphis, but with only 7.47 to play, they're down by 19, and this game just continuing to slip away from their grasp, and I think at this point, it's kind of safe to say that it's over. Mike Marks, his team has been playing phenomenal football. Even their loss against Atlanta, they are playing like one of the best teams in this league, and they, they, that's because they are one of the best teams in this league. No doubt about it. 34 to 15. This has just been a mess for Memphis after those fumbles. I mean, they were winning this game 12 to 8 at one point. And since then they've been outscored 26 to 3. Tony <coughs> excuse me, Donnie Hayesman. Kicks it away, back to receive Terrence McGee. On the return. Looking for some room to run, takes it to the 29-30. This has been a long game. And Memphis now. Johnny Manziel, 12 for 25, 103 yards at a pick. And you look at those stats and you're like, they should bench him. But guys, if you're watching this game, if you're looking at all the dynamics that have been going down with the fumbles, the drop passes. This game is not Manziel's fault. He has done everything possible to get his team to win. Let's it rip deep down the field and is out of bounds. Had a man open. Not able to connect. You know, he broke loose with that 51-yard touchdown scamper to put him on top. 9-8. Had a couple nice runs, a couple of good passes just been a messy game here in the rain and Memphis in trouble. Back to throw on second down. It's a quick, quick pass to Reese Horn to the 35. Look, look like he got way less than five, but I guess forward progress will give him five. Reese Horn been very underwhelming today with fumble, drop passes. It's not been his day. It really hasn't been anyone's day on the Memphis side of the football. Third and five. Back to throw is Manziel. Plenty of time. Gotta get rid of it. And he's gonna be taken down. He was loading up. But A.J. Tarpley gets in there for the sack. And that'll probably put an end to this drive. First sack of the day for the fleet. And then just kind of putting the extra whipped cream on the frosting. On the cake. I guess you called it icing. Whatever. <laughs> Manziel, he was getting ready to unload, but Tarpley shuts it down. And the San Diego team has just been playing phenomenal football. Fourth and 12, they're going to keep out 
the offense, I guess why not? Back to throw is Manziel. With time. Let's it go deep down the field and is knocked away, incomplete, almost picked off. And San Diego now at the 28, so looks like they might get another 40 burger. Why not? I'm sure, Burger Vizu will throw for another touchdown. Manziel lets it rip and just overthrows Brandon Barnes down the seam. I mean, there's three San Diego Fleet in the in, right there. Bergovici coming back out, and he's thrown three touchdowns today. I mean, it's been one of those days. It's just Mike Bergovici, it's just like he doesn't turn over the football. It, it, I don't know what it is. He's just able to find a way to get it done. First and 10 out from the 28. The motion is spruce, and they give it to Gardner. Trying to spin his way upfield, takes it to 26. Look at that. Only four carries on the day for Gardner. But 81 yards. And that, that touchdown, that really made things difficult for Memphis. This has just been one of those games where Memphis is going to look back and film. And once again, for the fourth straight week in a row, you're like, oh, man, that mistake cost us the game. But that mistake cost us the game. That mistake cost us the game. You start to wonder, is Mike Singletary just not the right coach for Memphis? I don't know. Garner picks up a first down to the 16th. Close in on 100 yards in the day. Would be his first 100 yard day of the season, despite only having five carries. This has just been one heck of a game for the Express, a, a team that, excuse me, the Fleets, a team that was looking ready to roll on to three and one and keep up with the Stallions back to throw Bergovici. He's going to let it go to the end zone. It's knocked away and almost picked off. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you throw the pass like that, it should have been easily picked. But it's just knocked down. It just finds a way to... It's just like, his passes just never get intercepted. It's, it's wacky. It's wild. Second and ten now. From the 16. Anyway, this is a huge win from for San Diego. Back to throw. Bergovici passing again, not really sure why, checks it down, that's caught by Gardner who slips, gets back up, makes a move, and takes it to the 12th. But yeah, to get back to the point I was making, San Diego, they're 2-1, ready to move to 3-1, and then they host Salt Lake, who's 4-0. That is going to become a really, really tight race there. If Salt Lake wins that game, they pull, they really just pull away, they're 5-0, and then San Diego's going to have to hope that they can hold off. Arizona and San Antonio, but a win there. They're four and one to take control of the division. They're looking in good shape. So a lot on the line for San Diego going into next week. Third and six. Bergevici will throw. I guess why not? All day. Caught underneath by Spruce, but he's blown up. Right at the 15. There's a loss of a few on the play. Fourth and nine, and we'll see Donnie Hageman as Brandon Maiden makes a nice tackle. Man, this has just not been Memphis's year. And this game looks like a blowout, which, in reality, I mean, Memphis absolutely dominated that first half. Yet we're down by 10 points going into the third quarter, which is wild. And it just goes to show that this team is not built resilient at all. Donnie Hageman now for his first field goal attempt of the game from 32 yards out. Kick is on its way, almost blocked, but it is through. And San Diego up by 22 points, 37 to 15, in what has turned to be an absolute blowout here. The final stages of the game. Mike Singletary is going to find a way to, to change things around quickly. Traveling to Atlanta next week, they're going to be 0 and 4, and that's like basically their last hope. They can at least improve the 1 and 4. Maybe get it put together some sort of winning streak. But, you know, to start the season 0-4 in, in a league where you're getting these teams that are developing well, such as San Diego, Atlanta, Salt Lake, it's just very difficult. And even the teams that are worse in their division, Birmingham and Orlando, one of those teams is I don't think they're going to give up the playoff spot, no matter who ends up getting it. On the return is McGee. Takes it to the 27, and that's where... 
Johnny Manziel and company will set up shop. The Express have got to just somehow create a game plan that works. And we go back to what I was saying when they were kicking, remember? <laughs> Earlier on in the game. They're kicking the field goals. I'm like, it's good that they're 12-8. But remember, they're just settling for field goals when they should be scoring touchdowns to come back to haunt them. And look at the score right now. Down by 22, and you think, you go back to some of those plays, really just killed them. First and 10 down from the 27. Man, it's all back to throw. Let's it rip down the field. He's got a man open as Reese Horn makes the catch at midfield. And actually, into San Diego territory at the 48. It's a nice throw for Manziel on the pressure, and Reese Horn gets open. So Memphis at least going to try to put together something here in the final minutes of this game. Time continues to run down the clock. As this game obviously is over at this point. But we'll see if Memphis can maybe come up with something offensively. But yeah, it's crazy. They're going to be 0-4 and they easily could be at least 2-2 two two on the season. First and 10. From the fleet, 48. Back to throw is Manziel. Pressure lets it go to the sidelines and it's... Wow. Reese Horn with another blatant drop. Second and 10 now from the 48. And this has just not been Memphis's day. And again, a first half that they dominated, yet they were down 22-12 going into the third quarter. Back to throw, Manziel all day. Now just has to let it go, and it's overthrown, looking in the direction of Zach Stacy. That brings up third and ten now from the fleet, 48. Just been difficult all around for Memphis. See what the play call is here on third and ten. Back to throw is Manziel. With time. Shoots it across the middle as caught. Hauled in by Dante's Bird. First down for Memphis to the 33. That'll probably take us a two-minute warning. And yeah, I mean, Dante's Bird. You go back. That drive where they settled for three, made it 12-8. Bird was open, streaking towards the end zone. Manziel missed the throw. Score there, you're up at least 15 to 8, and get the two point conversion, you're up 17 to 8. So, stuff like that. You look back on the fumbles. And it's just been, it's just been a disaster for the Express, who have been out, outscored 29 to 8. To 3, excuse me. 37 15, two minute warning. The fleet rolling to 3 and 1 the season. Them and the Salt Lake Stallions are looking pretty dang hard to beat right now. First and ten, all receivers spread by for Manziel. Back to throw. Let's it go quick outside. It's caught. Dante's bird, and he gets out of bounds at the 27. Probably would be nice to see Manziel at least score a touchdown here at the end of this game. Get a little bit of redemption. And again, look, he's made some mistakes this game. He's not been perfect. But again, I, I can't help but defend him when you've got players that are fumbling the football. And just fluky stuff that just it isn't necessarily Johnny's fault. Second and four from the 27. Back to throw. And it's intercepted. Picked off at the 20. That's Xavier Coleman. Well, that one was his fault. On cue, right? On cue. That should just about do it here. Under two minutes to play. Looking in the direction of Zach Stacy And Coleman just jumps the ball. Really just an excellent play. It's underthrown by Manziel. And if he puts that ball a little bit further out, let's Zach Stacey run underneath it. Instead, it's well underthrown. San Diego takes over, and this Memphis crowd is dead quiet. This is supposed to be the game that maybe, you know, turned around their season, got them on the right track. But instead, still going to be winless. First and 10 now from their own 20, and San Diego should just be able to run out the clock here. Watch them keep it on the football. On the ground, it's Gardner. Looking for a lane, takes it to the 23, and he is 
just five yards away from his first 100-yard day of the season. Second and six now for the fleet. See what the play call is. Obviously, well, it's obviously going to be run. At least it should be. It's Gardner, and this time he goes absolutely nowhere. Great tackle there on the exterior by Andrew Jackson, who's had a couple nice plays today. That takes us down to under a minute. Third and nine for the fleet. And Gardner looks like he's probably not going to get to his 100-yard day. That pushes him back three yards. Been a great day for him regardless. But, uh... 39. And Gardner cuts it loose. The 28, and that should be the last play of the game. He does get to 100, I think. Looks like he just does. Wow. I thought he was going to get to 99. Eight carries, 100 yards, and a touchdown for Juan Gardner to finish out this game. And yeah, I mean, that's what we've been talking about when Mike Mars gets his main man in the in the backfield involved in the game. Look at that, 37 points. No need to punt this football, but they might anyway because it's Madden. They will. Sam Irwin Hill gets seven punts on the day. Reese Horn makes a move. Taken down at the 28, and that should do it from Memphis, and it does. The San Diego Fleet come on the road and dominate 37-15. The Memphis Express, they fall to 0-4 in the season. It has been a rough go for them, and this game, I know it's a blowout, but they certainly could have won this game if they just had some things go their way there in that first half. The fumbles, the turnovers really killed them. Johnny Manziel ends up throwing two picks there in the second half, and it just was a messy day here in rainy Memphis. The Express 0-4, the Fleet, meanwhile 3-1, looking pretty dang good there in the AAF West. Meanwhile, the Express now 0-4 and really starting to slip there in the East Division. 37-15 is our final score, and that'll do it for us here at the AAF Simulated. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for watching. I'm sorry if you're a Memphis Express fan. Probably not too happy with the 0-4 record, but there's not much we can do about that. San Diego, though, you're a Fleet fan? All hands on deck, man. All hands on deck. You're 3-1 and, and rolling. Make sure to go follow us on Twitter if you haven't already. Get all the latest updates, news, information, and all that important stuff. Check out the AAF sheets down in the description below where you get access to all the scores, stats, season stats, individual player stats, game stats, all that good stuff. The power rankings, the standings, and so much more. Lots of access there for you guys. And again, if you want to support us, we'd really appreciate it. Whether you send us money through PayPal, get us some merch, something like that. Or, or just share this with someone that you know would enjoy the AAF. Thank you all for watching. Big win for the fleet and a big game next week, uh, next game, excuse me, between the San Antonio Commanders and the Birmingham Iron. Both one and two, both looking to get their season back on track. That'll do it for us. Thank you for tuning in.